Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today what I want to talk to you guys about is details. What do I mean by details? I mean the little things that make all the difference. Things like before you drive an hour and a half to the lake, remember to bring your electronics with you. Now, you guys have seen the graphs Tim and I use. Solix 15s, they're huge, huge, they're amazing. How I didn't stumble over those things on my way out the door this morning, it's like trying to walk over a TV screen. How I left that at home, I have no idea, but I did. If you're going to leave them at home, don't do it on a foggy day where you can't go anywhere, but it gets better. Let's talk about details. I also recommend bringing the boat keys. That would have been a really good one this morning. I would love to have keys to my boat right now, especially since I drove so far to get here. It'd be really fun to start my boat and go out here and fish, even without graphs. What else? Uh, I recommend remembering your rain gear. I mean, it is January and it is foggy. It's a little chilly. Shoes would have been good too. Those of you that ask if my toes ever get cold down in the comments, they're pretty cold right now. What else? Oh, here's a good one. Here's a good one. When grabbing the rods in the morning and you want to throw finesse baits, make sure that you don't grab a flipping stick. Really do grab the rod that looks like the flipping stick, but is made for throwing finesse baits. I'm sure I could go on and on and on and on. I am having one of those days. But seriously, what I want to talk to you guys about today, since we are clearly not going to do a whole lot of fishing, is how to figure out what depth to fish at. And the reason why I want to do that is we got tons of comments on the last two videos about that exact thing. Uh, you saw us fishing shallow, you saw us fishing deep, and guys were asking, how do I know where to fish? You've told me what to throw and why to throw it on a sunny day, or how to drag when it's cold. How do I know what depth? So in all seriousness, I really do want to address that for you. Uh, here's what I'll say about that. There's, a, there's, there's variance in water temperature in the water. You need to understand that. Summertime, the shallow water is warmer than the deep water. You know that, you're familiar with that. It, you know, if you get in the water and start swimming down, it gets cold very quickly. Wintertime is the opposite. The lake turns over. You've heard that term before, and that is a literal term. The lake will turn over in the fall, meaning the water at the surface is colder than the water in the deepest parts of the lake. As short version of the story is, as the air temperatures get colder and colder and colder, they cool more of the surface water until eventually the lake flips over. That's the short answer. What does that mean for you? That means that in the heart of winter, the fish are deep. They're going to get down, if they have an option, that is. If they have an option, they're going to get into the deepest holes. Now, if you're on some super deep reservoir that's two or 300 feet deep, they're not going to the bottom, but they are going deep. They're gonna get down there somewhere in that 30 to 90 range and get insulated into that warmer water because they are a cold-blooded animal. They want to be in those warmer temperatures. It's easier on them to live in those warmer temperatures. There is an exception, however, and that is why you will see us dropping down on a fish in 30 or 40 feet of water and catching them, and then turning around and throwing up shallow and catching one up there too. The exception is that as winter starts rolling through and you're getting past those coldest days and nights, because those cold days and nights, that water is frigid, those fish are deep, they're feeding very, very little. You can still catch them doing the things we just talked about, dragging with those finesse baits, slow fishing a, a finesse jig down deep, you know, three quarter ounce head, curly tail, just slow fishing down deep. You can catch those fish. But as you start to get those warmer days, just like we talked about last week, where you're getting that sunlight coming in, you're getting that light penetration, the really, really shallow water will start to warm up again. And for a period in the afternoon, it will be warmer than the deep water. When that happens, those fish flood up into that water and they feed aggressively right in the middle of that afternoon window. And that's why you're going to hear guys talking about doing well middle of the afternoon. That's what it's about. The sun starts to beat down. Those fish can come up. They feel good. The water is still cold, but it's the warmest they have been in months. So to them, it's warm. 
and they'll come up and they'll feed aggressively like the water is much warmer than it really is. But as soon as that sun starts to get low, that temperature will start to cool, they go right back down. Only other exception is runoff. You know, rainwater, flood water, that sort of thing. When you get heavy runoff into a lake and the lake starts to rise, Sometimes that water is warmer than the lake water. Sometimes it's cooler than the lake water. But either way, you're going to have a lot of food coming into the lake. So when a lake starts to rise aggressively, you know, it's coming up half a foot a day or three feet a day or six feet a day, whatever it might be, the faster it is rising, those fish are going to follow that up and they are going to get dirt shallow. I mean, dirt shallow. We did a lot of videos with that. Uh, January and February last year because we had those exact conditions in California where we were full flood stage. All the lakes were chocolate milk and the bass were in one to three feet of water and you start throwing more aggressive baits. We're throwing big jigs, dark colors so they can find them in that murky water, throwing big creature baits, throwing bright square bills, bright spinner baits, you know, bright chatter baits, really aggressive baits that those fish can key in on and you fish right on the bank. I don't care that the water is 48 degrees or 51 degrees. If you've got rising muddy water, those fish are going to come up to that rising water. If you have inlets where you have you know, creeks dumping in, they'll get right up in the current. If you don't have that, if it's just running off the banks into the lake, they're going to spread out right up in the grass, in the brush, right on the shoreline. And they will be in the cover. If there's a stick sticking up out of the water, they'll be touching it. The reason for that is anything that's sticking in and out of the water will get warm in the sunlight faster than something that's underwater. So if there's a stick poking out, they'll get up and touch that stick because it's just a fraction warmer than the surrounding water. And they'll sit right there and then wait to feed into the shallows right on the bank. Again, water's coming up. so every minute of the day, they're gaining a little bit of ground that they can hunt on. So they're going to be pushing the shoreline. But if you don't have those conditions, if it's stable, it's the middle of winter, you want those deep fish, they're going to be sitting down in the holes. Sometimes they sit in what we call the hollows. That's, uh, say you have a, a big, uh, you know, it, well, it depends on the lake, but say you've got a big cove, okay? One of the main coves in the lake the middle, the desolate area, down in the belly of that cove. You fish both walls, you don't fish the belly. We call that belly the hollow of the cove. You can graph, if you've got good electronics, right up the center of that hollow, and you'll find the depth that those fish are sitting at. They'll sit in the very bottom of that cove at a comfortable depth. Say you discover it's 32 feet, you can go to the next cove, the next cove, the next cove, the next cove. They'll be very, very close to 32 feet, right in the hollow of every single one of those coves. I hope that makes sense for you guys. Uh, it, it is difficult in the wintertime because you're not getting the feedback you do in the summer. Summertime, you can be doing all the wrong things and still be catching little fish and getting some feedback or doing the right things and catching a ton of fish. Wintertime, you do all the right things and you're still waiting for those key bites because generally you're fishing for larger fish you don't get that feedback to telling you you're doing it right. But if you take those, those things that I just taught you and apply that to your water, you'll at least know that you're doing the right things while you're out there trying to find those fish. And again, do keep it simple. Reference back to that dragging video and that sunny day video, those baits are key. We'll link those baits down in the video description. Again, you wanna keep it really simple this time of year. Focus on just getting bit because you'll be surprised sometimes when you do finally get those bites They are giant bites even when that's not what you're going for You might be dragging a little jig and end up tied into a 12 pounder and that's what happens in the winter time But it's one of those things where you might get that 12 pounder and then never get another bite the whole rest of the day So stay focused keep going fish the right depth depending on conditions pay attention is your water rising is your water stable? Is it murky? Is it clear? And then adjust accordingly, and you're gonna find that those fish are not as hard as you think they are. You can catch them. Take that out to the lake. Remember, bring your graph, bring your rain gear, bring your boat keys, apply these tips, and you will have a better day than I'm about to have. But seriously, I am still gonna try and catch some fish. We'll see what happens. Thanks for coming along, guys. 
hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll talk to you soon.